Y'all get ready? Yes, you get oh, ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, my loves, it's your girl T. And once again, I'm talking about Monique's ass, okay? Anyway, so if you guys don't know, after the whole Damon Dash situation went viral, of course Monique, honey, she came running out of nowhere to insert herself in the mix, okay? She took to social media to basically tell her damn loves to go check out this interview with Rolling Stone magazine, and she basically leaked tapes of her and her husband talking to Tyler Perry. This entire situation is messy as hell, but I'm here for it, bitch, okay? Anyways, go ahead and check out this video of Monique telling folks to go run to Rolling Stone, and I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys has a video of her husband and her confronting Tyler Perry. Go ahead and check this out. Hey, my babies. I want to thank y'all for sharing the love and showing me the videotape with Lee Daniels vindicating Damon Dash. Now I want to give the favor and the love right back to y'all. And I would ask that you go to rollingout.com magazine and you'll hear Tyler Perry in the audio vindicating not only me, but my husband. Where that brother says we did absolutely nothing wrong and he would come up with it publicly, but he never did. And for the brothers and sisters who are coming in right now tonight saying, Mo, we are sorry for not believing you and bashing you, I want to thank y'all. But someone would ask, if y'all can say y'all are sorry for it, when are the billionaires going to take accountability and responsibility? If I'm not lying on Lee Daniels and I'm not lying on Tyler Perry, why ever would I be lying on Oprah Winfrey? Take a listen and see what y'all think. What would you want That's to be answer. done, sir? How what would you want it fixed, Tyler? How would you want that fixed? And How would I want what, what fixed? Let the, me tell the, you. The reputation, how would I want that fixed? Let me tell you. What, what exactly are you asking? Let me tell you. So that, because, I not, and, and my husband is that part of our team that he has the business conversations. I'm the part of the team that you saw May 13th on the stage. So what I would ask you is, because you're talking in Tyler Perry language, I would ask you to let Monique talk to Medea. Because when you start talking in Tyler Perry language, brother, you talk like you don't get it. Right, nigga. Right. You got to laugh at it because you know. Because you know. I really am trying. Because you know. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Tyler. When, you, when I watch your movies... When I watch your movies, I dig Medea. And you know why I dig her? You know why I dig her, Tyler? Because she could be your mother. You know why I dig her? You know why I dig her? Because that bitch is real to her gut. And she don't give a fuck how I come out. She don't give a fuck how it's taken. But everybody knows she love you. But she gonna tell you the real shit. See, when you stepped away from Medea and you became Tyler Perry the billionaire, this is the conversation you're having. Like, well, guys, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? See, you a brother that slept in your car. And you needed and you needed niggas to fight for you to get you up out the goddamn car. See, your mama that you love so dearly. See, this is when I know that the, the, the powers that be and everybody saying on the radio and everybody saying on the media, oh my God, it's Oprah and Tyler. They're the ones that can employ her. Why ever would she say it? Because I love them niggas. That's why I'm saying it. Because I'm tired of reading the stories a hundred years from now where we had to go through this shit and we watch our brothers and sisters die and suffer in silence and in poverty and we know they was right. What I'm saying to you is, Medea, make Tyler's ass step his ass up. I'm talking to Medea right now. Medea, I need you to pull Tyler's ass in the back and say, baby, you watching this sister and you watching her family starve. You're watching it. And you're saying, what do you want me to do? Listen, don't you play with that baby like that. You know the shit y'all did was wrong to her. You gave charity, you gave them four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars to charity, and you know that bitch got fifty thousand dollars. Where's my pistol, Brown? Where's my pistol? Cause I need to shoot this nigga. Now I'm not gonna kill him. I'ma shoot him in his ass to let him know Medea's mad as shit right now. See, that's why I'm talking to my brother. So I appreciate you calling me. I do. I appreciate you calling us. But when you call me, what you gonna do? I'm gonna call and find out what whatever money is coming in for the precious, and I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna send it over to you. Whatever it is, I'm gonna send it to you. Well, let me let me let me say this. 
Let me say this, and I want to talk again. I'm going to write you a check, Monique, seriously, because, no, no, hear me, hear me, because this is the thing about this is, and when we start talking about this one doing this and this one doing that, 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 black people doing this and black people doing that, what we need to understand about that is this. Where we are right now and what we're trying to do, we, we, we got some opportunities that a lot of most people didn't have. So what, what I don't want you to feel one day, not one day, is that you were mistreated or that you were treated unfairly. Now, if that means that, that I, I, that's what I need to do, then, then, then you, you do that. You do that. You take that and, you, and, 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 and take it from a place of love. Let me tell you where I'm going to take it from. Let me tell you where I'm going to take it from. I'm going to take it from its business. And I'm going to take it from my brother saying, listen, yo, this is what y'all was supposed to get. No, here's the thing, brother. Well, I don't know what you were supposed he, to get. He, 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 really he, here's what we're saying is, when you say, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I'm going to send you the check. Listen, you, not charity, brother. I don't, we don't, because see, what happens is, what's not going to take place on our watch is this. I wrote a check for something that came in, and it's one of those things where you're missing the point. And we believe enough in the universe to understand that, listen, when a person come to you sincerely with understanding what it is that you're talking about versus just saying, I'm going to find out what it is and I'm going to write a check. Now it's in the tabloids. You wrote us a check because, you know, I know you flew Whitney Houston in on your private jet. You know, you gave T.D. Jakes a million dollars and the whole night. is the way that this is being done it's like don't throw us no chump change because we had to go through a movie audit with Lee for monies that he didn't get and they're saying that he did something with the money from the movie okay these are the things that we had to deal with so to speak about the dollars that you bought that's the thing that I have to I have to deal with too because I bought the movie to Lionsgate Listen to what I'm saying, though. This is, but listen, Tyler, 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 Tyler. This is what I need you to hear me out on. In life, you can't walk around mad at everybody because one person did something to you. You must be able to compartmentalize where your frustrations lie. So when you say that you had the things going on with the movie and then you had it with Lee and then Monique, you're lumping everyone together. And that's what people of color have a tendency of happening to them. They get, they're get they all this way. See, if you just focus specifically on the interaction with Monique and yourself and I, it ain't never been anything but cordial, even in times of disagreement. Because our thing is, we're not looking to... It's like we said on the podcast, who in the hell wrote the story about how David stepped to Goliath and said, let's roll, dog. Let's me and you get down. Y'all are Goliaths. We just the Davids. We not in no position to be trying to start. We not looking to try to start any beef. But at the end of the day, all I'm asking you in your private time, because it's not going to happen right now on the phone, all I ask you in your private time is, how would you want to be treated if you were in a situation with people or a person put out something false about you, then you say, then someone said that they didn't have the same experience with you. They're glad that they had a great experience See, with... This is, this, is why, this is why I'm having trouble answering that question because it starts as a question and it goes in that direction. So what, I was on to you for a minute. Let, 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 me, let me stay with the question because you make a good point. Let me stay with the question. The question is... What would you want someone to do for you who said things about you and or mentioned things about you, alluding to the difficulties that they had with you, all because you chose. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. All because you chose. I got an answer. I got an answer. How can you answer something and I'm not finished? Okay, well, let me ask a part of the question. Maybe you can give me the other part. How about that? Can you do me a favor? Can you, since you called up to have a real conversation, typically I, I know you used to directing, but what I need you to do is just hear me out man to man. And that is this. 
How would you feel if someone says something about you that would that you were not contractually obligated to do? What would you want them to do to make that right? And it don't have nothing to do with money. If somebody had said that, let's, let me just try to be in the position. If somebody had come along and said, Tyler's difficult, he's terrible to work with, he's not going to do anything that you want him to do. He's, he's, he, he, if they said all those things, right? If that's what the rumor was, and, and, and there were other people who knew that would not, was not to be true, I would want those people to stand up and say that's not true. So, will you and Oprah do that? I can't speak for Oprah. I can't speak for Oprah. Will you do that? For. It's my experience. I, I, I certainly can. I, I, I've never worked with Monique. All I can speak for is my experience on pressure. I don't give a damn about saying saying that that that. Would you do what you wanted done for you, Tyler? It's real simple. Would you do what you would want done for you because you at you told David. When he said his experience was wonderful, you said that was not your experience. And the question I would have, what did you experience with Monique and or I that made your uh, your interaction with us displeasurable? Especially, I see, exactly where you're going. I, see, I see exactly where you're going. What made my interaction displeasurable is to have to, to try to navigate between Precious, Lee, Monique not wanting to do any, any national press about getting paid, having to navigate through all of that, that's where my problem was. But, but Tyler, yeah, but, but Tyler, man, I'm done. but Tyler, this is where we are, though. I'm talking in real time. But when you understand, because you're, again, speaking about other entities and components besides Monique, what we're saying is, what, what made it this play? But, but what I'm saying to you is, I want your experience based upon your understanding that Monique, as we told you then, see, writing those scripts, or whoever wrote those scripts, they understand life. Come on. And I thought it was you. Come on. And if you don't understand that when you sit by and you say nothing when you know it's wrong, as you now said you know, and you agree, then what's the, what, what is the call really for, my brother? What is it? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to say this because I spent way too much time here. I thought that this would be a quick call that I could just call and say how I felt and, and to absolutely wish you the best. The we'll only see. way this changes, I think the only way, the only way this changes, I think, for, for you guys and where you are is this. I think Monique needs an amazing movie. She needs, a, she needs to be with a, a great director. And once the movie's done, it comes out, she gets all this kind of buzz. She gets all this this that she did before and then this thing goes away that's that's the way this changes it's got to be the right thing that comes along kind of some of the stuff that i take spencer has been doing that comes to our or viola comes along she does that and all of this goes away now i know that, that, that town and how it works it's like okay oh that was a moment that's passed she's amazing that was wrong Honey, y'all just heard that messy ass audio. So anyways, they're basically confronting Tyler Perry because Tyler Perry supposedly ran into Sydney's, you know, frat brother from college and stated that Monique was difficult to work with. So they're confronting him about that.
And then Tyler Perry was agreeing that they should have been paid more, you know, for Precious. And he was going to try and get money for them on the back end. You know, this entire conversation was just really, really difficult to listen to. One, because Sydney was just so unprofessional. You know, Sydney kept cutting him off. He wasn't able to get a word in edgewise. And they're basically trying to punk this man into trying to get them some money. Tyler Perry had nothing to do with the whole Precious debacle. You know, at the end of the day, Sydney and Monique signed on to do a movie where they got paid $50,000. If Sydney was really a business manager, he would have tried to get Monique some money on the back end. You don't do nobody no favors in Hollywood. Ain't no damn friends in Hollywood. And my thing is, they're mad at Tyler Perry because Tyler Perry supposedly never got them the money. Now, let me make this clear, okay? Just a video ago, I showed y'all where Dame Dash gave Lee Scamio's money way back before he even made Precious. So this was like in 2008, okay? He gave him $2 million. And to this day, it's now 2018, and Lee Scamio's has never paid Dame Dash, okay? So if he's not willing to pay Dame Dash and he owes Dame Dash that money, what makes you think that Tyler Perry's gonna be able to talk Lee Scamio's into paying Monique for some shit that was not in the contract? She chose to take 50000 and run because she didn't think the movie was going to do what it did. And because the movie did what it did, now she's upset because she's not seeing any revenue from that on the back end. Where she could have signed up to be an executive producer. She could have signed up to get back end credit. She chose not to do that, so that's on Monique. Why are they sitting here going in on Tyler Perry as if Tyler Perry owes her something? The whole conversation to me was very passive aggressive. You know, it almost seemed like they were trying to even blackmail him. Tyler Perry don't owe either one of them shit. And then they wanted Tyler Perry to go to the public and tell folks that Monique was not difficult to work with. Even if Tyler Perry said that to their friend, that was a conversation that Tyler Perry had behind closed doors. He never made that conversation public. So why would he go publicly to state that Monique is not difficult to work with when he's never publicly worked with her they've never been in a movie together they've never worked together Tyler Perry doesn't even know Monique like that so I just found the whole situation just really disturbing and then they're saying that he needs to turn into Medea they want to talk to Medea it's like this cannot be a serious business conversation and the fact that they secretly recorded this and then now that dang dash is you know having his beef with Lee Scamuels now here comes Monique trying to ride that wave and then, you know, throw Tyler Perry under the bus too. But the whole situation is crazy. My thing is a lot of folks believe Monique after she went in on Lee Scamuels, Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people did believe where Monique was coming from. Most people's issues with Monique, like myself, were the fact that she wanted everybody to cut off Netflix on behalf of her. And I told y'all, I'm not cutting off my damn Netflix. And most of y'all didn't cut off y'all's damn Netflix. I was just honest enough to say the damn shit, okay? I don't care if you're Monique or my mama. I'm not getting rid of my damn Netflix, okay? Well, maybe for my mama, but not for Monique. But you know, the whole situation to me is just really tasteless. And it's going to further blackball Monique in the industry. The fact that she's secretly recording conversations. Now she's leaking them out. People are not going to want to fool with Monique. You know what I'm saying? If this is what her manager, her husband is advising her to do, she needs to get a new team around her because her career has definitely fallen off. You know, all these shenanigans she's been pulling off lately, it's just not a good look. You know what I mean? Am I saying that Tyler Perry's 100% innocent in all this? No, he shouldn't have been talking about it behind her back. But the thing is, he was talking about her behind her back privately to somebody, to a mutual friend. He didn't take this on a public forum. He didn't bash on a public forum. And now they're trying to punk him into trying to get her some money. And now they're trying to make him, you know, go out publicly and defend her. I mean, that whole situation is just really, really weird and really, really odd. You know, I don't think this was a good look for Monique, but I'm sure her, you know, her whole tech fans will be here in the comment section, calling me a coon and a bed wench and cussing me out. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? Y'all say what the hell y'all got to say. That entire conversation was off-putting. It was blackmailish. And her husband needs to have several damn seats, okay? Thank you. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning, hey, my loves, Monique <laughs> and Sydney. And basically, Sydney trying to, like, you know, kind of, you know, trying to punk Tyler Perry and make Tyler Perry get them some damn money from Precious when he should have been a smart businessman and made sure that his wife got money on the back end for Precious, okay? That's what he should have been focusing on as opposed to, you know, trying to scramble and get money after the fact. That's not how business works, boo, okay? Business starts at the table before anything is done, before anything goes into production. 
all negotiations are done first. You cannot then negotiate after the fact. And this is where her soul cop manager messed up. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. As it's your girl T, and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.